Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to show you how to install Windows 11 on VMware Workstation 16 Pro. So in order to create a virtual machine, uh, we have a few options in VMware. Number one, you can start on the main page, create a new virtual machine, or you can go to the file menu and select new virtual machine. I'm going to select new virtual machine here and continue with the wizard first step it is asking you would you like to use the typical installation method or would you like to go with the advanced we select the advanced module the uh, advanced option as we have more options available to us first on the first menu it's compatibility of this vm would you like it to be compatible with the older version of vmware workstation uh, because I'm not going back in the version of my VMware, so I'll keep it on the latest version. I will decide my image on the next page. So you can add your Windows installation image right now, or you can select it to add later. I want to add it later so you can see the settings of the VM. Next, you decide what operating system would you like to install. So I'm installing Windows 10 or any later operating systems that are 64-bit. So I'm selecting that because we're going to install Windows 11. Click next. Next step is giving your VM a name. That's the address as well that the VM is going to be saved. You can select where you want to keep it. I'm going to call it Windows 11. And as you see, it is being saved in my D drive virtualization folder backslash Windows 11, which is just created. Next, you decide the type of firmware for your VM. Windows 11 does not work with the BIOS. It only works with UEFI and Secure Boots. I'm going to go with UEFI. We don't need the Secure Boots. It's a test environment. So I'm going to click Next. Now you can decide how many CPUs and how many cores would you like to assign to your VM. I'm going to give it two CPUs, one core each, and four gigs of RAM. What sort of networking are you going to give it <clears throat> assigned to this VM? Um, please keep in mind, if you decide to go with an option that allows your computer to have access to the internet on day one, during the installation, you won't be able to create a local user. Microsoft will force you to use Microsoft account. For that reason, I'm going to skip that. So I will select host only networking. With that approach, my VM will not have access to internet. I can change it in the future, maybe right after the setup, but right now I would like to skip it. Click next. What type of controller would you like? I, I think you can leave it default. Um, and what sort of hard disk would you like to select? The default, the recommended is NVMe, which works perfectly for Windows 11. Now you have to create your disk. Uh, would you like to create an existing disk if you have created a virtual disk before or would you like to create a new one right now so in this case we haven't created anything before we're going to create a new disk right now the recommended disk size is 60 gigabyte uh, you can change it if you want go higher or lower depending on your needs you have three options here allocate all the disk space now this means that your virtual machine will create a 60 gigabyte VMDK right now, which means it's a fixed size disk. There is another option which you can go dynamically expanding, which means the computer will not use 60 gigs of your hard drive on your host, but it will start to grow as you put data in it. So it will start as with a very small size. And then, it, then once you start putting files in your VM, that actual host file will start to grow. That's the best option for our lab environment. So that's what we're going to do. You have the option to decide to split that one big file into smaller sections for some uh, older computers with, with lower processing power or lower, hard, uh, or lower performance hard disk. It might be a good idea. If you're not planning to move the, uh, that hard disk too much, that VM the virtual hard disk around, you can keep it. Or uh, if you have a high performance hard disk, again, you can keep it as single file. So I'm going to click next. 
and it asks it shows you the name of the virtual hard disk that it's going to create and the location i'm going to leave it to the default and click finish our virtual machine has been created now it's time to take a look at the properties of that virtual machine and inserting our image now all the settings that we've done can be seen here I, I can see that my networking is on the host only what i need to do i need to insert my windows installation image i have my windows installation image in this folder so i'm going to select windows 11 enterprise evaluation click ok and click ok so we have inserted our image into the machine as well it's time to turn on the vm turn it on <clears throat> the first time you turn on the VM, you have to click inside the uh, window and hit one key on your keyboard. Why do we have to click inside this window? Because you only have one mouse and keyboard. Your computer doesn't know. The mouse strikes and keyboard strikes are for which one of the operating systems. Is it for your host or is it for your VM? For that reason, you're clicking inside the windows and it, uh, VMware, and it knows that you are sending the strokes for that VM. Once you install the operating system, you can install VMware integration tools, which will eliminate this issue. Now, on the first page, you decide the language, time and currency, and the keyboard input method. Um, English United States works fine for me. I'm going to click next and install now. We know that Windows 11 requires TPM or Trusted Platform Module for checking the biometrics. This virtual machine does not have biometrics and TPM. So the setup will fail and mark this computer as not compatible with Windows 11. So how do we bypass that feature? We know for sure that my host, my laptop, has the TPM chip in it but only this virtual machine cannot use it. So how do we bypass this issue? Now that we are in this state, we are in an environment called Windows P. It's a summarized small version of Windows just for selecting an image and applying that image. What you can do, you can press Shift F10 on your keyboard, which opens up the command prompt for you. Now, Shift F10 opens up the command prompt. From here, open the registry editor, regedit.regedit. So this opens the registry editor. What we need to do, we need to create a key and a value to bypass the TPM check. So what do we need to do? We need to go to HKey local machine under the system and setup right click and create a new key call this key lab config now in this key we need to add a value create new a d word a d word 32 bit value call it bypass TPM check and set it to one. This setting is telling the Windows setup to bypass TPM requirements and ignore it. So what we need to do, we're going to close this setup and do it one more time. Click install. And as you will see, this time Windows will skip the check and allows you to go ahead with your installation from here you can decide what type of partitions would you like to create on your disk and continue i'm going to put uh, the video on pause the recording on pause and unpause it once these steps are gone windows will restart three to four times before the installation finishes
And now we are to the final steps of installing our Windows 11. First, you select your country or region, United States. Your keyboard layout. It will ask you if you would like to add extra layouts. Um, I'm going to skip it for this example. Now it is asking you to connect to the internet, but because we don't want that, I'm going to select, I don't have internet access and continue with the limited setup. Continue with limited setup. Who's using the computer? That's the username would be created, the first local admin account and a password if you would like to assign. Last steps are the privacy settings. You can read and go through the, all the settings that are available here for you. Would you like to allow your computer to use your location? Would you like to use find my device settings? Do you like to send diagnostics data, including optional information to Microsoft or not? Does this device have ink and typing? Would you like to support that? Yes or no. And if you like the tailored experience and advertising ID, which I don't need any of them, any of those at this moment for my lab, click accept. And our windows is ready. The last thing that we need to do is install VMware integration tools, which acts as installing the drivers. I will pause the recording and get back when it's done. There you go, guys. Now we have a Windows 11 installed on our VMware. As we said, our last step is to install the integration tools, which helps us have an interactive mouse and keyboard with our VM machine. So in order to do that, on the VM menu, select Install VMware Tools. What it does, it will insert the integration tools as an image into the DVD drive for this computer. If I go to my computer, we see that the VMware Tools has been ins inserted. What we need to do is just simply install the settings. Next, we'll go with the complete setup, next, and install. This will restart the computer. Once the installation is finished, you'll see that your mouse and keyboard are not stuck inside the VM anymore, and the size of your display would be full size, so you can take advantage of your full graphic features. It also allows you to copy and paste files between your, between your VM and your host, and vice versa. As you noticed, the display size changed. And lastly, restarting the VM. Once our VM is up, our last tip for configuring your VMware with uh, VMware Workstation Pro 16 with Windows 11 is how would you like to see the size of your screen? As you see in my case, I've selected to stretch the guest. What does it mean? That I'm selecting the auto size and auto fit guest, which means that right now I have maximized my VMware Workstation page taking the advantage of full screen. If I minimize it or make it a little bit smaller, the resolution on my VM will change automatically. Uh, let's wait for the windows to log in and I can show you what do I mean. Now 
Now that we're logged in, let's resize the VMware workstation. As you see, the size of our VM changed. Now, if I maximize it again, now the resolution of my VM changed accordingly. So there you go. You have a fully functional Windows on your VMware workstation.